In this video, I'm going to break down the process of stopping using QWERTY in five simple steps to help you get started with learning a new layout and understanding how amazing some of these layouts really are. Along the way, I'm also going to share my first impressions of the graphite layout, which is what I've recently switched to. As we'll see though, there really is no best layout, but what there probably is, is a worse layout, and that is almost certainly QWERTY. None of the tools or resources in this video are sponsored. I was sent the Voyager keyboard for free when it was first released, but that isn't the focus of this video. This video does have its own sponsor though, and that is Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a mental performance shot and I actually find it a great way of hacking your brain to enter that kind of relaxed, productive flow state that's so good when learning new keyboard layouts. They ship to 65 countries, offer a 100-day money-back guarantee, and the best thing is I've got a 20% discount code for you. Enter VALAC20 at magicmind.com to get a brilliant deal. So back to keyboard layouts. One of the longest running areas I've been keen to optimize in my life is the experience of typing. If you're new to this channel, I'm a software developer and workflow enthusiast, and I extend my user experience design thinking to all areas of my life. Over the last few years, I've gone right down the custom keyboard rabbit hole and designed and built my own 18-key keyboard that spread the letter keys over two layers in an attempt to reduce finger movement. I've since gone back to a single layer layout on a much more conventional keyboard, but I'm still searching for the most fatigue-free and comfortable typing experience. One of the main ways I'm continuing to do that is explore alternative layouts from QWERTY. I've said this before, but I think I might have found the ultimate layout this time with graphite. If you're new to the idea of using a different layout from the absurdly inefficient and unpleasant layout that is the QWERTY layout, it's actually surprisingly easy to get started right now using your existing keyboard. All we're actually talking about is that instead of the keys being in the places you're used to them being, they're moved to different positions where it makes them easier to type for their actual frequency and order used in English words. Of course, it's even better on a custom tented split keyboard where you can change the layout on the firmware itself. And I'll show you just how easy that is at the end of the video too. Basically though, when you type on QWERTY, your fingers have to jump around between rows a lot and your weakest fingers have to do a lot of the work. You need to use multiple same finger bigrams, which is where two consecutive keys are pressed with the same finger and it feels horrible. And there are many other areas this layout objectively fails layout performance metrics. I think dabbling with keyboard layouts is something anyone who uses computers a lot should have a go at. If nothing else, as a reminder of just how silly it is that convention all these years has led to mass adoption of QWERTY in spite of it being objectively one of the poorest performance forming layouts of all time. It's worth looking at the stats and processes used to test and create these new layouts, and this is the way in which you'll choose which layout you want to learn. It's quite remarkable how far the community has gone in their efforts here, and nothing demonstrates this as clearly as this document now in its second version. This document explains all about the stats used to rank and rate different layouts, and these include same finger bigrams, same finger skip grams, full and half scissor bigrams and skip grams, trigrams, rolls, and alternation. The layout I'm using now is one of the top scoring layouts in this document, and it's so exciting to use it. This is a high alternation layout, and I think that's why I like it. The one thing I find I hate with typing is doing consecutive movements on the same fingers. Alternation goes a long way to reducing that, but the compromise is a reduction in rolls, which is a pleasant characteristic of other layouts. Quirt of course is bad for alternation and rolls. I do wonder if too much alternation may lead to an increase in the likelihood of getting letters in the wrong order as you get faster. I guess this is something I'm just going to have to keep an eye on as time goes on. So let's look at the example of same finger bigram usage from this document. The word decade on QWERTY is typed basically all with the same finger, but on graphite we can see it's just a simple alternating pattern between my hands. Deciding between alternation and rolls is a great example of just how much this whole layout journey is definitely very much a game of compromises. There is no best layout. You'll want to find one that feels right to you and that's going to mean different things to different people. For me, typing on graphite feels like how typing really should be. Even though I'm still not super fast on it, I'm fast enough to feel just how elegant it really is. And by that, I mean if you pause a fraction of a second to pre-buffer the positions for a whole word in your mind and then bash it out as fast as you can, you can get a sense of what it would be like to be able to do that the whole time. For me, I think what tends to happen is as I get faster on a layout, different metrics become more important. For example, I was really happy with the ISRT layout until I started getting faster on it and I figured out the issue I was experiencing was what is known as a scissor but it was when combined with a skip gram that I found it annoying and this is where one finger has to go up a row while the next or previous but one letter uses an adjacent finger on a different row. Time will tell if graphite will have similar issues for me but so far I'm not feeling any major concern with it. It's definitely the layout I've felt most comfortable on so far. 
Oz recently sent a fantastic website that lets you preview what it feels like to use different layouts without needing to actually learn them. It simply tells you which letters to type so you can experience what it would be like to be using another layout to type a set of given words. It's a brilliant way to dip your toes in and compare just how differently the words feel when the various metrics associated with layout performance are optimized. You can enter any layout as you like as your current layout and your testing layout and it simply generates you a list of characters that you can type to synthesize the experience of using your new layout. Obviously you won't be typing using whole word muscle memory so it's going to still feel very different but you could memorize a few of the patterns and type them fast to get an idea of what it would feel like at proper muscle memory speed. Now let's look at how you can actually get started with a custom keyboard layout using your existing hardware. On Mac, we have a brilliant app called Carabiner Elements and that lets you easily switch your layout around. I think if you like using laptops with built-in keyboards, there is a real case for keeping the staggered layout muscle memory, but just changing the layout of the keys on the software side. There are a bunch of other tools available on multiple platforms to achieve this as well, and I'll list those in the description. In contrast to the software approach, which can feel pretty complex and hacky, if you get a dedicated custom keyboard like this one, you can change the layout on the board itself. This means you can plug it into any device and use your layout with no drivers or software needing to be installed on your operating system. This ZSA keyboard uses the simplest UI tool I've seen for the config that you can use to set up the keyboard how you like, just directly in Chrome, and then you can just press the button on the keyboard to save that layout to the keyboard. Other custom keyboards might need you to work in a config file directly and use the command line to update your keyboard. ZMK is a modern wireless first keyboard firmware that is a joy to use and has some amazing power if you're using a more DIY board. Other boards might use QMK and if you're configuring that using the config file that does start to get a little bit complicated. For the initial process of learning the key positions, keybr.com is always useful, but once you can confidently locate each letter, I think it's really important to start training on real words. The nice thing about keybr.com is that it introduces you to new letters one by one, but only once you've got good on the previous ones. It's been my go-to for all my layouts for that initial learning stage. When it comes to practicing with real text though, one of the more popular training tools is MonkeyType, which is a great looking app, but I'm very excited to see there's actually a new one out by ZSA, the makers of the keyboard I'm currently still using, which is definitely worth checking out as an alternative to monkey type. I think one of the best tips when it comes to learning new layouts is to practice whole words or at least syllables at once. Don't just think of it in terms of memorizing letters, that really doesn't translate well to actually getting faster. So this means if you make a mistake, use alt backspace to delete the whole word, visualize the letters in the word and bash it out as fast as you can in one go. That way you'll learn the muscle memory for the whole pattern and it's that that lets you build up your speed. A final shout out to my sponsor Magic Mind and a reminder of my discount code VALAC20 to get 20% off your order. Watch this video next to learn about Aerospace which is an incredible tiling window manager for the Mac and I'll see you there.